we call you the king of Zion. We call you the Lord of creation. It belongs to you, the earth, and all the inhabitants thereof. Lord, we will never be tired of acknowledging your Lordship. We thank you. We bless you for the privilege of wisdom, for the privilege of access to the mysteries of the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, tonight we have come to know to grow, to hear you speak. We pray that your voice will be clear. Speak to us, O King of Zion. And cause our ears to hear that which the Spirit wants us to hear. We pray that you will reveal the mind of the Father to us. And I pray that we will rise, we will rise, we will rise. In the name of Jesus, we declare that our spirits are receptive. There is the hearing of faith and the working of miracles. And Lord, we thank you because burdens are lifted in this atmosphere. The sick are healed, the oppressed are delivered, they will give direction and hope. And Lord, every prophetic word needed to change every life and every situation, it will come expressly by your word. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. First Chronicles chapter 12. Keep standing. Please keep standing. First Chronicles chapter 12. And I want us to read verse 32. I wish we can have this projected. First Chronicles chapter 12. It's a privilege to stand and minister God's word. It's a privilege to bring to us understanding. Are we there? It's projected. I just want us to read the A part. Are we together? Can we read? One to read. And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. There is a relationship between understanding and the quality of your action. It says they had an understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do. Not just that they acted, but they knew what to do. We are here tonight gathered so that God will grant us the keys that will help us know what to do. Many people are acting, just taking actions that are not producing results. It's one thing to act, but it's another thing to know what to do. He says the children of Issachar, they had an understanding of the times. Then they knew what Israel had to do. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. It's a prayer, not a song. It's a prayer, not a song. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like menorah. Light me, Lord. Light my life. Light me, Lord. Let me know what to do. Pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Let your life swallow up my darkness. Light me, Lord. 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 The Bible says, they that stumble, stumble in the night. There is, there is no way you will stumble once there is light. 
Are we together now? Yeah. The Bible says the eye is the light of the body. It says, and if your eye be full of light, right? If your eye be full of light, then paraphrasing now, it lightens your path. But then if your eyes be darkness, there are too many people stumbling, stumbling. I don't just want to start preaching. It's important to know that our hearts are prepared to receive. You see, this song that we just sang right now, it's not, it's not a special number to just make you feel emotional. I tell you, it's one of the greatest cry you can pray in this season. The Bible says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. But the Holy Spirit is the light upon the candle. A candle is useless. Notice the way the candle lights. It keeps burning the wax and then the light keeps coming. So the treasure in that candle is hidden inside. Are we together now? Without a fire, there cannot be light. The greater the burning of the outer sphere of that candle, the more it gives illumination. So I want you to sing this song with understanding. Father, there are, I, I confess ignorance in my life, but light me. Are you ready to sing it for Lord? Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Give us illumination tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Just turn to your left and right. Generously greet someone. Night me, Lord. Hallelujah. One of the blessings of working with the Holy Spirit is the capacity to develop your discernment. Discernment is the spiritual quality of perception. It's the ability to perceive not just the origin of things, the spirit that engineers certain things, but also a perception of thoughts and a perception of intentions. With uh, Discernment works almost like mind reading. You are able to pick signals. Are we together now? That's why I led us to read that scripture. It says the sons of Issachar had an understanding, a perception of the times. One of the secrets, listen, one of the secrets to a life of victory is the ability to move as the spirit is moving. In the revelation of Ezekiel, and Daniel had the same revelation. He says how that the cherubs, everywhere the spirit moved, they also moved. The secret to a life of victory, the secret to a life of triumph, is to do what God is doing. Is to go where God is going. Because anywhere God is, that is where his life, his power his victory, his glory is concentrated. If God is going to the left and you are headed right, you are in trouble. If God is going right and you are headed left, you are in trouble. It's important. That's why we pray. And that's why we create an atmosphere of worship. Because among other things, we want to build discernment. The capacity to understand the speakings of the Spirit for every season. Hallelujah. And um, God has been helping us. We've been bringing teachings already that I believe are very, very applicable to our lives and in line with the word that God has given us this year. Tonight, I want to share on something powerful. This message is very personal to me, especially in this season. 
because I have seen the let me borrow from the words of God's servant Bishop David Oyedepo. I have seen the capacity for sweatless triumph on the strength of what I'm about to share with you. But then I have seen how difficult the life of a man can be if you do not have this. Let me digress for a minute or two to reiterate something that I believe has been an anthem in this place. It's important to know what spiritual growth is because that's why we are gathered here spiritual growth first and foremost is the ability to conform experientially to the image of the Christ conformity conformity to the image of the Christ the second character of spiritual growth is the ability to sustain an ability where you accurately comprehend the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom so I can know whether or not you are growing spiritually by seeing to what degree you are conforming to the image of the Christ one and then the second point is I want to see how you are living your life I want to see how you interplay spiritual laws like a chef in a kitchen with raw ingredients but can give you an assurance to be patient for two hours and within those times he or she is working out something mixing the ingredients with intelligence and knowledge and after two hours sometimes what he or she is mixing will even change color they they know what to do and then they bring out a beautiful combination and it blesses everyone you are not a blessing if you do not understand the secrets of the kingdom you cannot be a blessing men rise in this kingdom through secrets we rise in this kingdom through secrets our business in this kingdom is the ability to trade secrets the secrets of the kingdom no matter how you brag about being spiritual if you do not know how to handle the secrets of the kingdom to produce the results that are required you are wasting your time and you will eventually get frustrated no matter how confident you sound now. and what a joy to have a ministry and a platform by his grace that can afford us the opportunity to rise to a point where we understand the secrets of the kingdom this is what we teach every time and tonight you're about to learn one I pray that you not only add it to the list of the mysteries you may have had and are not using but that you pay attention to it because it may be the one key that is required in this season to bring prophecy to manifestation hallelujah can you pray for one minute and say Lord open my eyes open my eyes open my ears Tonight I'm teaching on what I title the gift of men. The gift of men. Ephesians chapter 4. The gift of men. I want to share with you and unlock to you a mystery behind strange breakthroughs. The mystery or a mystery really not just a mystery but one of the kingdom secrets that controls what i will call a quantum leap in a man's life hallelujah i want to share with you a mystery that is responsible for the sudden explosion in the life and destinies of individuals businesses ministries and all of that please pay attention the gift of men Ephesians chapter 4 your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word 
and I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your world. I will forever sing your praise. I will sing. The wonders of your love As for joy I will see Of the wonders of your love And I will forever Seven and eight, Ephesians four Seven and eight. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and did what? Gave gifts unto men. Those gifts are not talents. Those gifts are not the gifts of the Spirit. Those gifts are people. When He ascended up on high, He gave men to men. There are men called gifts. Are we together? The gift here is not anointing. The gift here is not talent like word of knowledge. No, 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 no. Not at all. Not at all. When you read all through the context of Ephesians 4, you never see the mention of anything anointing or gifts of the Spirit. Uh -uh. He gave gifts unto men. Where is your own? Because the Bible says He gave gifts unto men. And He says anyone who has that gift will come into a level, a stature, He calls it. Are we together? He gave gifts unto men. Fast forward all the other verses. He says to the end. Because of those gifts. That we come into the fullness of the measure of the expectation. The stature of Christ. Meaning there is a gift I must receive. There is a dimension of the operation of the spirit I must receive. In men. To be able to rise to that level please pay attention everything on earth today happens because of one single entity called man the wars in the world today happen because of man the peace experienced by nation by nations have been brokered by men listen to me the poverty that we experience in Africa and other parts of the world have been caused and are being sustained by men. The wealth and abundance that have been experienced in our world today have been engineered by men. The economic system that our civilization currently runs on was designed and is sustained by men. The policies that govern the progress or the slavery of individuals and territories were carefully decided upon and prepared by men the only reason why there are still human beings on earth is because there are still men the reason why there is hatred in the world is not because there are animals it's because there are the only reason why every other thing works. You say I'm a real estate mogul. No. Land does not give anybody money. People love the land. So the land becomes expensive. Everything revolves around men. Please pay attention. I want to share with you a powerful mystery. Koinonia is running today not because Jesus is Lord. But because there are... The radio station tries because at the other end of the broadcast there is a human ear not an animal ear 
not a monkey or a dog ear a human ear to listen there is an armed robber planning to rob today and his mission looks realistic because of the existence of men how come the entire civilization of mankind run in, yet we never study them we study clothes we study oil we study every other thing but we never pay attention to men let me show you a wise man who did what we should be doing psalms 8 hello madonna Psalms 8. Hello, Madonna. Do you know why David was called up a man after God's heart? Listen, it was not just Solomon alone that was wise. David was very wise. He said, O oh Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Listen. Who has set thy glory above the heavens? Read on, please. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength because of thy enemies that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. 3. When I consider the heavens the work of thy fingers the moon think about it which thou hast ordained for what is man that thou art man you took your time to create everything for him you created the sun the moon you put protection you make sure plants produce so god there is what is man what was in your mind when you were designing this entity called man that even you god will not rest why that is all god thinks about in heaven do you know god does not think about his glory I know what he's thinking about now man think about it sister if you are aware brother has been thinking about you from morning till night i think it's a cause to smile that shows you are valuable what is man that thou art it is a brain full mind full your mind is full right what's that song he will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Lord, oh, so what is mine? He never say who is man. He's not talking about the personality of man. What strategy did you design that you called man? I know his personality, but Lord, what is the use of the could you not replace him with something? Listen, read the Bible. God has replaced many things with many things, but God has been unable to find a replacement for man to an extent that no matter how bad man was, God will come and say, We will fix it. Even the man himself, after working them, he still preserved others. There must be more in this mystery called man. You know what is in a bank. That's why they protect it. You know what is in the earth. That's why we put NMPC to guard it. But we do not know what is in this entity called man. What is man? I put it in a better way. What is in man? that thou art mindful of him. Can't you just waste them away and build another species? Lord, are you, are you so dull? After you created man, did you lose your sense of creativity? Why do you want to so fix him? Why can't you just replace him? Can't you put a mind in chest? What is man that thou art mindful of him? Not the son of man, that as glorious as heaven is, you are not comfortable, so you come to visit him to an extent that you make that man your temple. That man your temple. Your temple. It's like Donald Trump coming to live somewhere at the back of this place. 
and he says believe me you cannot get the joy and he said no 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 i mean you have everything you need let's sing that song again god we are we are, we are flying tonight he will not suffer my feet to be also came wanting the body the guy had died they were fighting over the body what was in the body don't just say it's your spirit alone that is important listen to me what is in this body that jesus is interested in satan is interested why do demons look for human bodies what in a body L listen listen what what happens to them when they are in a body You must understand this. I will show you a mystery that will change your life. We look for oil and ignore men. We protect oil wells and leave men. Think how foolish we are. We put fence around lands but leave men and ignore them and kill them and burn them and we want to move forward. The psalmist said, I have already considered the ground. I consider the oil fields. I consider the sun. I consider uh, uh, I, I found out your attention is on this entity. So God, please tell me what is man? That you are mindful of him. If I have a safe with a million dollars and I'm hiding it, if you touch any other thing, I won't say anything. But if you are coming here, there will be shifting back. That's how it is. Satan noticed every other thing he taught. God didn't bother. But the moment he started coming to man, his attention. But that's that man. And then Jesus himself came and walked upon the earth. They asked Jesus, why did you come? He said, to die. <laughs> what kind of assignment is that? Went to the cross and the people he was dying for were not even repentant. Yet he was not angry. There is more. To me and you i will show you something today that will make you never hate any human being i will show you something today that will make you see that your prosperity is in the hands of man what is man the most abundant secret to our blessing moves around us every day yet we we can trade it a thousand times to look for oil we can trade it a thousand times to look for whatever it is. We protect things more than men. We would rather kill men than kill things. If 100,000 people die, listen, and Nigeria's oil field is protected, we think we are still alright. Listen, I want you to think about this for a moment. Just imagine that everyone at the same time in the world falls into a state of coma, except you. Listen. Do we have intelligent minds in this place? Imagine that not that everybody simultaneously, 7.2 billion people, enter a state of coma right now, except you. Let me tell you what will happen to you. I know. You will first run to the bank. You will find it open. By the way, you will enter the safe and run to a mall. No security. No nothing. No plane. No more terrorists. No fear. Where are the demons? They are no longer interested. You search for them. Every dark corner does not make you afraid again. So why did it make me afraid? Man. Man. The only reason why demons have something to do is because man is still alive. So, brothers and sisters, I want to ask you again, what is in man? Don't you think this calls for study? This thing changed my life. I'm playing with your expectation before I begin to teach you. 
what is man when i consider the work of your hands when you see a man designing something you want to know what he wants to put there when i see you building a house i want to know the kind of thing you want to put there then you finish building a beautiful house lavish money and carry a little gold or a little baby or a dog and put in the house i know that that is a dog plus something maybe that dog you are hiding cocaine in that dog i will tear that dog and find out why are we together now jesus shed his blood many times men will cry even for themselves to die listen listen have you tried to fix things fix things and it didn't work what do you do you try to fix a gas cooker again and again it doesn't work god doesn't throw it away now it's a mystery i wish i had time i would have shown you something a prophet saw that just like a shepherd comes to rescue a lamb he gave us an analogy in the book of Hosea. I think it was Amos. Amos now. Right? That a, a lion ate a lamb, ate everything. He only left two legs and one ear. Two legs and one ear. Yet the shepherd fought the lion and recovered the two ear, the two legs and one ear. When I read that scripture, I said, Ah, if you come and you see a lion devouring your sheep and intestines have been eaten only one ear and two legs is it worth fighting for and yet the shepherd fought i preached a message years ago with that because for as long as you can have ears to hear the creative word of the lord and two legs to take a step of faith you can get everything back again it's the mystery of restoration the most important part of that sheep the lion did eat it what a foolish lion it ate every other part and left what can bring it back the lion would have eaten the ears and the legs and gone away and you would have finished that animal because if you still can hear and you can take steps of faith then all hope is not lost let's go to our discussion tonight please sit down everything on earth i said happens because of man the demonic oppression happens because of man there are more angelic activities on earth right now than human activities all because of man if god were to open your eyes in the realm of the spirit you will see myriads of angels dispatched and sent because of man every business succeeds because there is a man to provide that value and there is a man to patronize it is that true those of you who do businesses on campus you know that holidays are very bad times for you you don't like it why not because the building moves are we together now to an extent it me that you can ship a consultant from india bundle him like a package and bring him to a hospital just to perform an eight hour surgery and go back and pay him millions yet you think he is worth it hallelujah what is man that thou art mindful of him i have spent my life studying and learning the mysteries of the kingdom that control the results that we desire i still am at it and i do it passionately i'm like a spiritual archaeologist if you would um, permit me to use that word because i strongly believe the the secret of the future is in the past there is something we have long forgotten about that holds the key to a glorious future and so i study a lot and when the lord began to teach me the mystery of men um i just felt it was very important to teach us now when you consider the personalities of men listen you are talking about the psychological implication of men you can have people who we consider to be extroverts people who we consider to be introverts and etc that's not what i'm talking about today i'm not talking about the physiology of men i'm not talking about the psychology of men i'm talking about the spirituality the very spirituality the spiritual significance of having a gift called a man 
in your life notice every time there is the coming of a man into another person's life the bible calls it an advantage when he created all things when he made the woman remember he said this is not good so another body comes into another life and the bible says that person's life should not be the same I, i'm just using marriage as an analogy he said he that finds a wife he never said he that finds oil he never said he that goes to school has done a good thing he never said he that, he that if you can find another human being then he said there is a friend another human being that sticks close <laughs> he gave gifts to men the bible was speaking about the patriarch abraham and he said abraham set out on his journey as instructed by god and then lot went with him he never said lot helped him lot just followed another man and lot's life started changing are you hearing what i'm saying now let me show you the implication of men the bible records that there was a man called laban laban and then jacob came to the house of laban and over a span of about 10 years laban's entire life changed is that true the bible speaks about a prophet called jonah on his way to run away from god's instruction entered a boat where there were other men and certain strange things started happening every time someone died they started calling for the appearance of a man and a man appeared and then something happened have you noticed every time men entered an atmosphere they, they made certain things to happen men men when Gehazi was troubled he went to meet a man are men really important when they were hungry 5,000 people they found a loaf five loaves two fish from a man and took it to meet a man even when the donkey spoke he spoke to a man please i want you to pay attention because what i'm saying will bless your life forever that means if i ignore men i am ignoring something more than a personality i am driving out a realm of reality and possibility from my life listen listen if i ignore men in fact in ancient times when kings had men they were called wealthy not just because they had an arsenal of people to fight because sometimes the people were not skilled but in the multitude of men is a king's honor the multitude of men is a king's honor every religion fights for men kings of the earth fight for men the only reason why they fight for territory is so that it can accommodate more men are we together when a man meets with his wife they give birth to another man why is god interested in another man when satan tries to afflict a woman with barrenness what is he trying to stop what is he trying to stop he's not trying to stop joy no He's not trying to stop peace. There are people who are happy without children. Why would Satan take the issue of men personal? When Moses was giving birth to, listen, Moses was giving birth to a decree. Listen, they said they should kill all, not animals. In this case, the masculine uh, gender, but then men when jesus was born the same thing happened again kill men what is in man oh god that you are mindful of what am i missing the last person i drove away from my life what did i drive away i'm about to show you why is it that the bible even says a born again spirit filled man for treating another man in his life called his wife the heavens will close over him and his prayer will not be answered 
I didn't steal. I didn't kill. I only did something to another man that was not good. Yet heaven responds to it. This entity called man, brothers and sisters, has more than just a personality. If all you look at is just two eyes, two legs, and a personality, you will cheat yourself. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you certain things about men. Number one, men in themselves are not perfect. Ignore this. Because what I'm about to show you will be stopped when you are when you don't take away the you know the, the the effect of some of these things i'm sharing men are not perfect in themselves you may meet foolish men in your life you may meet all wise men in your life however it still is not a, enough reason to just throw them away they may be holding certain things that i'll be revealing to you shortly are we together for some reason, God hid his possibilities in men. He didn't hide it just in buildings. He didn't just hide it in territories. But the consecration of the possibilities of men, he hid it. The possibilities of God, he hid it in men. He made man the highest of his creation. Men are not perfect in themselves. Number two, the attitude and the behavior of men, good or bad, good or bad, listen to me, does not stop your receiving what they carry. The attitude of men, good or bad, does not stop your receiving what they carry. Elijah was an angry man, yet... He was used to change the life and the stories of people. You have to listen to this. Let me say the third thing that I want to say about men. Are you ready for this? There are certain possibilities in men. Listen to me. That predates even their salvation experience. Please listen. Predate their salvation experience that can still be received, whether they are born again or not. You have to understand what I'm telling you. Now, am I just, am I saying people should remain unbelievers? No. But I am saying there are certain things that God has put in men that can be received, whether or not those people are born again or not if an old woman causes you whether as a witch or as a human being the fact that she has lived long enough certain possibilities have been open to her to be able to speak over your life are you getting what i'm saying now yeah. all through scripture every time children cried god had children every time read your bible every time children cried there was a response from the earth to heaven that's why i say out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained are we together your destiny and my destiny are men dependent write this down it's a very serious point the your destiny and my destiny the fulfillment of it is highly man dependent my prosperity is man dependent the quality of the work god has given me the quality of your church your ministry your life is man dependent the quality of your life on earth as a believer and as an inhabitant of the earth is man dependent.
your success and my success in life are highly or is highly men dependent evil on earth is men dependent the advancement of the kingdom on earth is men dependent the fulfillment of prophecy on earth is men dependent god can speak the bible never told us in the prophecy it said a virgin shall conceive a woman aligned herself with that prophecy otherwise jesus would never have been born he never said mary no a woman chose to play that script it just so happened that the name of that woman was Mary. it was said he would be buried in a virgin tomb he didn't tell us the owner that was somebody's business that was property it so happened that the man who fulfilled that prophecy was joseph of arimathea he said how that he would be betrayed but he never said by a man called judas the prophetic word of God, listen, has been hanging over the heads of many people because the men to make it happen are not available. Or they have come and we have driven them away. Please pay attention. Occultism thrives through the availability of men. When the devil wants to destroy a family, there usually will be an envoy an individual an entity whatever it is men are more powerful than mediums you can keep a charm in a house but the most powerful charm is an aligned human being who has agreed and said satan i donate myself to scatter the life of these families are we together My assignment is tonight is to help us to open our eyes to the mystery of these gifts that God has given us that we throw away from our lives around called men. And watch the unlimited possibilities. I call it a quantum leap. That your life, there is a, a quantum leap is a jump, not just a movement. You move from one phase of possibility to the other because of the presence of a man. Hallelujah. There are four implications of the presence of men in your life. And I want you to note this. Number one, the first implication of a man coming into your life, especially sent by God, is the coming of wisdom ideas and strategies the only entity that is able to convey wisdom ideas and strategies is man every time a man shows up in your life wisdom ideas strategies wisdom so when i drive a man away I did not just drive a personality that's why i said dot not wisdom cry it personifies wisdom because wisdom moves in and through men are we together now the conveyors of strategies and ideas and wisdom are men every time you are ready to move in a, to another dimension god sends a man and if you have the discernment that man can represent the strategy for the next level. That man can represent the wisdom for the next level. That man can introduce the idea for the next level. Many pastors, many businesses, many individuals are grounded because they think men are just black entities in clothes. No. Every time you see a man coming to you in your state of misery, begin to rejoice and begin to discern what is this man what is coming to me it's not just a human being with a mouth to speak are we together when you order a product from conga 
or Jumia, they have their pack. Is that true? No matter where you buy it, they rewrap it with their own pack. And every time you see it, sometimes it could be a surprise. When you see it, you start laughing because you wonder what is inside. Whether it is big or small, you want to see what is inside. The next time you see a human being come to you, especially sent by God, in a prophetic season, you must begin to rejoice. Because that person, ignore the personality. This is what I'm teaching you. When you look at the personalities of men, you will drive all your miracles out of your life. There are times you have to ignore those personalities and discern. I've been fasting three days. Lord, what is the key to the next level? Then a man comes. Men are the vehicles that God uses to transport wisdom and strategies. Wisdom and strategies. Implication number one. Pay attention to what I'm teaching you. Wisdom strategies. Let me tell you, I think shortly before Koinonia would start, when we were still meeting that time at the back of chapel in the Abu campus here. One night, the Lord led me to do something. I just told everyone, we're not so many, maybe three, four hundred or so then. And I told everyone, please, can you write, don't write your name. Just write out whatever suggestion that you think can make this ministry rise to the next level. That's your assignment. Just write it and drop it in the basket. Brothers and sisters, my life changed. Koinonia entered another, a quantum leap. When I began to read some of the things that were written, I was shocked. Men, bringing with them strategies. Do you know the answer to your prayer is not far from you? You just don't have the eyes to see. Let me tell you, God is not wicked. I have learned by experience that every answer is closer than you think. It is shrouded in a man. The secret to your financial hardship, somebody is walking with the answer. And he will walk and pass you. Walk and pass you. Walk and pass you. Even be encouraging you while you are crying. But because you have not discerned that men are the conveyors of strategies, men are the conveyors of ideas, men are the conveyors of wisdom. I've had people help me solve problems in life and I've been surprised not at the solution they brought but that they are the ones who brought it. And I start saying, I mean, so why did I start going around? I mean, you were here all the while. Has that happened to you? After going around looking for answers, talking everything, it is your roommate while you are discussing in the night. You say, have you tried A, B, C? And that's the end of it. Men convey us solutions disguised in human beings that we push away and never rise to the top every time you pray and you see men coming into your life pay attention there may be men who have annoyed you every day of your life but on that day they are sent on that day they are sent who gave naaman the secret of his health I know we clapped for Elisha, but it was not Elisha. The Bible says there was a little slave girl, correct? A slave girl meant that she did not even have the regiments, the education and the training. Yet, listen, it was her that told Naaman, he said, I, I, I know I'm a slave, but there is a man of God. There is a man of God I want you to meet. When he met the man and, you know, doing his big manism, she, she's the one who came and advised him and said, see, he didn't ask you to go and bath in another dirty water somewhere. And Naaman washed seven times. And the Bible says his skin. Could it be that since 2013 you would have risen? But God kept answering your prayer. And you kept rejecting the answer. God, give me strategies. And all of a sudden, he said, please get out this way. We are talking serious things here. Said, I had a little dream. I saw you, I just wanted to share. Shut up! Don't tell me anything. I'm not stupid. I'm, I'm spiritual. A small girl like you. And you threw away your answer. The person, only humans can dream. Dogs don't dream. Forget all that junk you hear from sciences. 
only humans have the faculty and the capacity to dream a dream is a mystery is one of the access points where we receive revelation from the realm of the spirit only men can dream only god knows how many times you have dreamt the answer to someone's prayer yet the person drove you away i'm not talking of false prophecies and, and nonsense where you keep harassing everybody you keep seeing things about everybody's life not your own life i'm talking of quality god inspired solution that has a track record of results that we all appreciate are we together men number two what is the implication of a man in your life endorsements and opportunities men are the conveyors of endorsements and opportunities listen if no man can endorse you in this life you will never rise Paul, the apostle a man approved endorsed when they produce a drug they say this drug has been endorsed by the nigerian dental society Brush with it, and your life will never be the same, or whatever it is that, that is the advert. Are we together now? The endorsement. Whenever you are in doubt, when you see that endorsement, listen, we trivialize endorsement. Companies have entered million dollar status overnight because of endorsement. People have gotten admission with whatever it is because of endorsement. I was talking with one of our people here who have been trusting God, I think for a change of faculty or something. And, um, you know, the guy was discouraged. And then I told him, I said he should meet our daddy prof, you know, just to help him out. And he said, he, I saw him, I think it was just last week or so. And he was telling me, he said, everything is settled though. He said in his presence, they were driving everybody out. But immediately he entered and they saw the signature. They said, come in. Is it prof? Come in. It's called what? Many carnal people think it's not spiritual. You need endorsement. It was John the Baptist. Listen, this is a secret many rising ministers don't know. Somebody who earns the loyalty of the people must speak for you. Otherwise the gate will not open. The gate will not open. Show me the man speaking for you. Show me who has authorized. Listen, when a man endorses you, he takes his sacrifice and puts it for you to cross with. Many believers lack endorsement. Many businesses lack endorsement. Many individuals lack endorsement. There are many people who would have gotten jobs if only someone can say this and that and that. By the privilege of God's grace that he has granted me, I have endorsed people with just a statement. A one minute phone call turned them to millionaires. One minute phone call. Oh, I know this person. I can vouch for him. Help him. Benihim was at almost at a state of financial bankruptcy one time. They were going to cancel the crusades because he did not have enough money. He needed 10 million dollars in three days. 10 million dollars in three days. An anointed man like Benny Hinn, please pay attention. Benny Hinn was, you know, making a program challenging the partners to come. And, you know, when the accounts department, their back office were looking, nobody was really contributing. And the Holy Spirit told him to go and bring Oral Roberts. He carried Oral Robert and brought him. The old man came and sat on air. And they had only three minutes. Can you imagine? Three minutes to the end of the program. Do you know what Oral Robert said? He said, Benny is in need. Please help him. In less than 24 hours, they raised about $15 million. Everybody say endorsement. Don't joke with what I'm telling you. I'm teaching you a powerful mystery that you will need. Promotion. Many tongue talkers sit down everywhere because they do not... Do you know why I'm teaching you this? I'm going to tell you the responsibility. So that when you see a man that can endorse you, no sacrifice to maintain the relationship becomes too much. Because you understand the implication of that person's reputation to your destiny. All this unnecessary anger with everybody because you think you are the God of yourself. You will stay poor and broke and you will lose in life. Endorsement. 
90% of the ministrations that I have gone to by the grace of God have happened through endorsements. One pastor endorsing this. Someone saying, I came for Koinonia. Listen to this message. While they are saying that, I'm probably sleeping or gisting with somebody. I pray for someone tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. The voice, the voice. No, any, listen, not every voice can lift you. Not every voice can lift you. The voice that has been accredited is the voice that can lift you. And I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, may that voice speak over your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Men imply the presence of endorsements and opportunities. Pastor Alpha called me. I think, when was it that? Yesterday. I was in Abuja and he called me. And he said, Apostle, do you know anybody who read civil engineering? There is a job right now, as we are talking, for the person. No interview, no nothing. And all he wanted was who is, who is there. I mean, so that we can give him the... I said, Kai, I don't know anybody in my mind. Let's come for Koinonia. After, maybe the person is here now. As we are here, you are saying, praise the Lord. And I help you answer hallelujah because that's it. It's done. Someone's life changed overnight. How many people after service, they were just going out to trek just like that. And somebody gave them a lift. And while discussing, they said, ah, what do you do, young man? He said, sir, you know, I'm just moving around. Said, ah, well, how can you be moving around? What are you doing? I'm not doing anything. Come to my office, take this car. And they thought maybe the office looks like just a small fish pond and another building and they enter the office and they say sorry this person and he, he keep getting access until he gets to the man and he says well i'm the managing director of abc i'm the nigerian representative of this let your life change can men change people's life <laughs> you, are, you are a big joke Look, let me tell you, some things are not demonic oppression. Some things are childishness, which have been caused by lack of orientation. Sometimes we need sufficient adults to tell us how some things work. You know, all these childishness people carry around. I don't need anybody. You need, oh, you better change that talk quick. I don't need any man. Are you joking? Man, what is man that thou art mindful of? Man is a conveyor of endorsement an opportunity are we together that's why we work at making every service a great experience for everyone because everyone's experience is automatically an endorsement of what we represent i have gotten things without paying for them because of endorsements Brothers and sisters, I'm showing you a simple secret that will change your life forever. The Bible says they know not, neither will they understand. They grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course. People have received partnership in their ministry overnight because of an endorsement. I've had the privilege, I remember one time a particular pastor somewhere, you know, I, I don't raise money, raise funds and all of that. But I went to the church and I, you know, I saw the project they were doing. And when I, you know, said everything, I said, by the grace of God, um, I want everybody to sow a seed for this project. Just jokingly, do you know the pastor would call me like two, three weeks later. He said, in all they have met, they have prayed and they have fasted. He was saying, Apostle, you are really anointed. I said, no, 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 no. In my mind, it's not just the anointing. It's a track record. Listen, listen. Don't wait till you create the same track record. You, you, will, you will, time, time cannot wait for you. Leverage on someone else's sacrifice. The condition that was available to create that track record by another may not be available for you. Are you sure what I'm saying? I know lecturers, and I say it with all humility, and it doesn't mean you should meet me after the service, but I know lecturers that I have called and said, Sir, please, so-so-so has met me that there is a problem in your department. 
and this thing is going to affect him. Ah, my apostle, how are you? You are even calling me. And I said, sir, please. I'm not saying you should uh, do anything, but please, sir, can you look into this issue? And the person will just come out and say, I passed, I graduated. It's only me that knows what happened between me and the other person. May someone discuss your rising, even when you are sleeping. But when you are, when you are sleeping, someone will say, look, you know Sam, I know how he will rise. Come on now. Listen, those who understand this never get stranded. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. There has to be somebody to speak. The voice that speaks for you is the ladder that you will use to climb in the destiny of life. You don't pay attention to what I'm telling you to be at your peril because someone is receiving already the answer. This is how God will bless men in this season. That's why I tell you, when God says it's a year of triumph, believe Him. It doesn't take time. It just takes the right voice speaking for you. Hallelujah. I have entered offices today. I have no business entering it because of the endorsement. Endorsement. Who has endorsed you? Man of God, I know you are anointed, but you are sweating all around with posters, flying everywhere and saying, please invite me, give me 30 minutes out. No, no, no. You don't have to do those gimmicks. Who around has had the credibility and is willing to endorse you? Hallelujah. I will never forget one, one of our ladies when she was preparing to get married. When she went to meet her mother, her mother said, I don't have anything to tell you. I don't even know this guy. Just go and meet apostle. Whatever apostle says, think of it, leaving somebody's destiny in my hands. I called the mother. I said, mommy, this guy is a very nice guy. She said, apostle, you are saying that? I said, yes. From that day, there was no challenge again. Lord, raise somebody to speak for me. Or raise someone to endorse me. Raise someone to endorse my business. Raise, some, raise someone to endorse my life, my destiny. There has to be somebody to speak for you. Listen, let me show you that Jesus, immediately they get back to Jesus. Where did they take him to? The temple. There were two men that endorsed him. Are we together? Immediately they took him. One prophetess called Anna had been there praying and fasting. She lifted him and began to speak. And then Simeon the prophet began to speak. When John was among different people, when John saw him, John said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world in the presence of everybody. Somebody must speak to you in the presence of everybody. Don't be angry that men are doubting you. You have not done anything to bless them. Why should they not doubt you? Listen, listen, let me tell you. Do you know, I say this with all humility. There have been people who by the grace of God, they started out in ministry and the church was not growing. The ministry was grounded and all they needed, sometimes they just call and say, man of God, please. So many people listen to your messages in this region. You are not here. You don't have a branch. Me, I'm here. You know I love God. And these people never come to my church. And then they make arrangements and the day I'm going for those meetings, some of those churches don't even have plenty of people, but they have multiple overflows those times. Why? Because somebody that the people believe in has appeared. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And then the moment I speak, I now say, oh, this is my a, a pastor friend, a great man, a man of integrity. I love him with all my heart. And immediately, it looks like a one second or five seconds talk. But the members just say, I found my pastor. Since I can't come to Zaria, I found the person that can represent him. That's why sometimes people foolishly carry my picture for meetings that I'm not coming. They don't care whether I say yes or no. They just start producing the posters in advance first because they think it's endorsement. Sometimes it doesn't work. But when you have a man truly who can speak for you, brothers and sisters, I don't see the witch or the wizard that will tie you. Ladies have married cheaply because someone recommended them. Brother, I've been praying. Honestly, there's this lady I've been looking at. Ah, no, no, no. This lady is a blessing. I tell you, if it's this lady, you are sure of joy and peace. 
in your life, whether in plenty or in lack. And the brother says, I've, I've, My prayer has been answered. A few months later, they are married. But do you know the same way people's destinies have been cut short? Somebody was about to rise, but a bad talk from someone brought him down. They were about to give him a job. He said, Don't give this guy a job. He walked with me, he's toast meant. He, maybe the guy has repented though. Do you know Paul had to do this for Onesimus? It's in your Bible. Accept him. I know he was once so, so, so and so. But now, just accept him. There are people here. All those who know you, knew your yesterday. You have repented today. You need a fresh voice that will tell people, this is not Saul. This is now Paul. Because the, the, the predicament of this Saul is destroying your breakthrough. Must speak and say no 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 this guy was an armed robber but january he repented are you hearing what i'm saying some of us our past will never let us go they know that you used to be around following every man yes that was your past but now you are born again and jesus is lord of your life yet all the people in your life are people who knew you 1997 so the moment they see a responsible godly man coming, they call and say, Kai, um, you know, David Dam, I wouldn't have told you, it's just because you are my brother. This is not a good choice. I command every voice that speaks when you are about to rise. The moment there is consultation among your destiny helpers to, to lift you, there are voices, there are pastors today that should not be begging for bread. Partners wanted to sow into their lives, but somebody said, I saw his poster with A and B's poster, and immediately over 70 ministrations cancelled just because somebody recommended you badly. I pray any voice in the name of Jesus that has been speaking even against your destiny, I silence that voice right now. Shout it, man. I silence that voice right now. I silence that voice right now. Please sit down. Sit down. Hallelujah. Cheat victory because a man showed up. Don't leap because an endorser showed up. There are pastors who their destinies have changed overnight. A man of God they invited somewhere could not make it and he would just say, please, can you go and stand for me? That was a meeting that their level of grace and experience should not take them there. And they stood there and they did well that day. After the meeting, there are seven or eight pastors. And they say, sir, please, can you come to a, for a meeting? Can you come for a meeting? Etc. Etc. There is no meeting, brothers and sisters, that I will go for that afterward, somebody from that meeting will carry the wondrous works of God to another region. This is how we have grown as a ministry. This is how we have grown even financially. The blessing that has come from people. Are we together now? I remember someone one time sowing into the ministry and he said that him, I think he's a critical person. He hates men of God. Many men of God are fake. They are not serious. But when he listened to my message and his mentor, he, he had his mentor, whoever that person was, listening to my message. He just said, no, we'll be sowing into this ministry. Every month, I tell you, every month, he sows a seed to Koinonia and a seed to my life. Do I know him? I have only communicated with him on text, but endorsement. Don't trivialize what I'm saying. Endorsement. Someone, you are selling products and you are doing retail. Whereas a hotel somewhere or whatever needs your product in wholesale. But they don't trust you. And you will not be given the opportunity to prove your trust. You will only be given the opportunity to be trusted based on somebody who already knows you, who they believe. And someone will say something as, ah, listen, if he's a mecca, eh, I can tell you he will deliver your chickens every time. If he does not deliver it, just take it at my risk. And all of a sudden, they will just sign it. And instead of selling one one chicken, somebody will come and say it's two five. You say we'll give you seven hundred. And all those arguments for hours just to buy one chicken. You will start doing wholesale delivery. Your life has changed. 
artists, music artists. How many music artists have been suffering as if God didn't call them? Beautiful voice, but no voice to speak for you. Beautiful voice, but no voice to speak. They only invite you if everybody they invited is busy. Then they'll say, sorry, honestly, this program is in three hours. I, are you free? Just come and cover our shape. You need a voice. Say, I need a voice. Say, I need a man. Yeah, you need the coming of someone in your life to speak for you. What opportunities have you been given? Were you given it or you looked for it by yourself? Are you seeing the secret to hardship? Where you have to look for everything by yourself? Who has told you to say there is a big opportunity? I cannot handle it. But here you go. Like whoever is going to get this job now. There are times they've invited me for almost every invitation that we honor. There are a few others we have to turn down. And there are times in my spirit, I have felt led to lift certain people. And I call those people and say, I'm sorry, I can't come. Their heart is paining them and I say, no, 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 no. But this person cannot call. But I know someone I can recommend for you. Do you believe me? Ah, apostle, we believe you. We have been praying. Okay, invite us so and so. He will bless you. Case closed. I don't want my life to be hard though. The Bible said the way of the fool is hard. Wisdom. That voice that must speak in my life. This has been my prayer. I'm sharing with you my secret prayer. Lord, who is the person? Everybody is buying land. They say there is no land. It's a lie. It's just that all the important people have bought it. The day you come, they'll say, please. So, so said they should give him land. I've shared a testimony here that I heard years ago. Um, and I will reiterate it very quickly. Someone who wanted to, um, I think, get admission in NDA. And then the, the required height level. The person did not have that required height level. And, you know, military people, they are very serious. Well, that's it. He returned back to Zaria and then met the Emir. And the Emir sent that they should go and tell the commandant. They should go and tell the man that the emir has added the height of the person. Hmm. Who is adding your height in this wicked world? Listen, this our world is fierce and wicked. Who is adding your height? When people stand and conspire, we must destroy Benga. We must make sure he does not rise. Who is the voice authorized to stand and say, no, not this? I will show you why doors don't open. Because the truth is, I want to admit this with all humility. Many of us are already prepared for the next level. But we don't know the endorsement is the key that we need. The truth is, if it's music artists, God has honored this ministry with great people. If it's intellectuals, there are some of you seated right now. One endorsement. I remember a gentleman who came here um, some time ago, a medical doctor, and he discovered um, something. He, was, he got the patent for um, reproduction of something to reproduce a particular device that can check, I think it can check your heartbeat and whatever without taking blood from your body. Very smart guy. He came here. And I told him, I said, please go and meet our daddy so that they will connect him with Professor Nock and like that, and I think so on and so on, like that, like that. We've not seen the guy again. I want to believe that God has lifted him, and I pray that it is so. I made up my mind that every voice that must speak into my life, whatever price it will take, I will pay to secure the endorsement of that voice. It's not human worship. Hallelujah. Or a robot. Help Benny. He's in trouble. And all of a sudden, somebody's prayer point becomes a gift. Hallelujah. There are men of God who just... Do you know there are certain stages, even ministerially speaking sincerely, if God grants you the privilege and the access to stand on that stage, as far as ministry is concerned, God has helped you. There are certain individuals, if God has given you the privilege to see, God has changed your life. 
endorsements, opportunities. Number three, what is the implication of the presence of men in our lives? Number three, what is the implication of the presence of men in our lives? Access to financial and material resources. Write it down. Access to financial and material resources. Part of the fringe benefits of the coming of a man into your life. Access to financial and material resources. Listen, listen. Every one naira, every material resource you pray for is currently in the hands of a human being right now. Praise the Lord. Every land Koinonia will ever buy in any nation of the world is currently in the possession of somebody now. Every transfer that you have been fasting for into your account, there is an entity holding it now like this. The money for your house is in somebody's account. So when you start building a house, it will not fall from heaven. Transfer will be made, transfer will be made, transfer will be made. Human beings. There are human beings that are generous enough to change your life. Listen, Koinonia, hear me. It is a false understanding to believe everybody is greedy. There are absolutely benevolent human beings. Your own price is to win their heart. You can go to bed. Hallelujah. And Lot went with him. He didn't say, and Lot believed what he believed. Lord, just walk with him. Hallelujah. Do you know that someone was sharing a testimony somewhere? Uh, I think it was a lady or so that was sharing a testimony. Somebody she knows, they were walking along a path, a road, and then the person was quite a senior man, and then he met a very big man, and he was greeting the man. And whilst he greeted the man, he gave the man, you know, the person she was working with now. That stranger, rich stranger, gave some money and looked at her. And said, ah, young lady, he decided to give her something too. Just like, he was not even counting. She said when she counted it, she found that it was 50,000. Just because she was working with who? Think of, think of your prayer point disappearing simply because you are working with the wrong person it's the same way you can be working with somebody and you check and find out ah, i left my house with five hundred thousand now i have twelve thousand what happened the presence of someone took something away from you access to financial resources your money is in the hands of men please believe me your money is not just in the hands of business you can sell anything you want to sell. It's a human being that will have to buy it for you to be paid. Men can bless you for no reason. You must believe this dimension exists. That a man can just bless you. I've had the privilege of blessing people in a lavish and a generous way. For no reason. I don't even know some of them. Hallelujah. Let me share a testimony that will bless you. I share these testimonies to encourage our faith. I came back from Abuja this just this evening, just coming here now. And um, yesterday in the night, I decided to take a cab just to go and get something to eat before returning to sleep. And while I got there, my, my elder sister came to give me a surprise visit and we chatted for a while and then, you know, saw her off. Uh, on my way returning, I asked the man, I said, how much is your bill? Probably because the man saw me buying things for my sister and the rest. Ah, you guys say, oh, guy, anything you give me. I said, no, no, please don't tell me all those things. Just, you, you are working. You are working with intelligence. What exactly? How much is your money? And then he mentioned, okay, X amount. He said, oh, guy, you know I told you I have three children. Because I asked him. I said, oh, you have children. How many children? He said, three. I said, you're a hardworking man. You know, we're talking on the way coming. I said, I like you. You're a diligent man, striving to make sure you provide for your family. And then when he asked me how much, I said, no, but you know that's not the price. So how much is the last price? Then he now told me the truth. He reduced it by some amount. And the Holy Spirit ministered to me. He said, I should take whatever was in my pocket, everything, 
everything that was in my pocket. I don't know how much, but it was, it was nothing less than 25,000. He said, take everything and give the man. As soon as I dropped from the car, I said, Mr. Man, you do not know me, but go and tell your lovely children that you met a man who decided to bless them. Make sure you take care. I removed everything. I dropped it. The man was afraid. Ah, this is, I hope this is not blood money and etc. 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 I just dropped it and said, okay, this is where I'm highlighting. God bless you. Until I entered, the man was shocked. That's the kind of experience that is, I didn't know. You will answer me this way. There are such occurrences on earth. I'm giving you an example. That's somebody's prayer. Now, it may look like it's 20 or 25,000 or whatever. I know it looks small to some of you. But that's the same way it can be 200 and something million. The same way it is that trivial. The same way it was. There are obedient people. Let me tell you. There are people who pack out of their house and give it. God said it. But if they have not had God, you can be dying. They will look at you like this. There are people who the voice of God is their trigger. But to get that voice of God, you have to invoke this and say, Oh God, let, let send this man. This man has what it takes to wipe my tears. Financial and material privileges. Accessed, sin, not through intelligence and business acumen, through the understanding that men can do this. I started doing something some time ago. I don't do it again. When I go to get fuel, whoever is before me, no matter how much he wants to fill his tank, I pay for it. I just said I would do it as a seat. If I go to get fuel and you happen to be before me, whether it's a bucket you are carrying, as long as it's within my capacity, I will sow into it. And I've done that and I watch the joy that it, it, it produces in the life of people. Watch this. One time, I, re I remember, I think it was one of these, was it Salah or something like that? A, a, party, a man came and I saw him bring out 200 naira. Ah, the wife was at the back of the bike. Just, he even just put one leg down and opened that this thing. Just, it's as if you just press it in and take it back. How much with 200 naira fuel? I, I looked at him. I said, please fill the tank for him. The man just turned. Ah, he was greeting me as he fill the tank. When he finished, I just waved. I said, Madam, bye bye. You know, this and that and that. And the man just looked at me. Do you know why I'm doing this? One, because I love God. Two, I am activating the same thing because that's what I want in my own life. I want a situation where one day somebody says, Joshua Selman, I hear you need a house. This. I hear you need five acres of land for koinonia. Take. I hear you need joy and peace. I believe it. Oh, if you like, don't believe it. I believe it with all my heart. It's not laziness. It's a provision that is in the kingdom. How many people have gotten free house? They are not in ministry. One day, somebody just said, come and escort me. And they are sharing houses and you just got your own. And left quietly and ran out of the town. Just quietly got a lawyer and said, sign this. It's called prepared blessings. Prepared blessings. Prepared blessings. That's what God is getting ready to bring for us in this season. Prepared blessings. Where you will wake up in the morning with a text and you check the text and all of a sudden a man sends you a text. Wanting nothing in return. I'm not talking of bribe. Look at this. Many of our parents, some of you know that I'm telling the truth. They are brilliant. According to their level of sacrifice, they should be working at the, the highest echelon of the government. But today, nobody can speak for them. There are many people who should be legislators, doing very well. Nobody is speaking for them. There are buildings, houses that should be completed, but there is no help. Because you start on your own. You are receiving 20,000 naira every month. But you know one day you can just be passing and somebody will just look and say, once in a while, we just want to bless people and it just happens to be you. Dr. Mike Mudok shared it, a story one time how that, I think it was his dad of blessed memory, or mom, they performed a surgery and it was about $25,000. The people had exhausted all their monies and, you know, the hospital just called them and said, once in a while, we like to do good things to people, just like charity, and it happens to be you. I was told about a woman of God in Abuja today, 
that went to a particular place and saw um, it's like their chapel devastated. She brought out eight million cash and said they should rebuild a house for God from scratch up. I know a man of God in this country. Well, not a man of God, but a rich man. The pastor had been shouting, we need a tent. All of you so we need a tent. We need a tent. Let's beautify the house of God. The rich man just kept quiet as if he doesn't know what they are saying. One day, the guy got up and bought a tent, 25 million cash. They brought it. I'm mentioning this big amount for a reason. I want to stretch your mind. Because some of you will never believe it. If you like, see, I'm talking about money, no problem. I know you don't need it. But your destiny needs it. So you better pay attention. In the name of Jesus. Connection with men who can help you. Do you know sometimes all you need in life is just help. You don't need advice. You don't need suggestion. Sometimes all you need, you don't need help like spiritual help. The direct need, if you need a watch, just sometimes, case closed, just that watch. Sometimes what you need is financial help. When Ruth, listen, when Ruth and Naomi when Naomi stood and was confused, did not know what to do. And Ruth said, I'm not going anywhere with you. Do you know a time came when she went to the field and she saw them cleaning? And Boaz said, leave some. What did she do? Just leave some. There are, there are blessings you will enter into this year. That you too, you will know that... This one, no, is not me. It's purely the sovereignty of God. And I stand in the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy it upon you as surely as the Lord God of heaven lives. May that come to you speedily. May that come to you speedily. Everybody shout, prepare blessings. Say it again, prepare blessings. It, it, it is true. It happens. Where somebody just steps in and solves your problem directly. I share with you a testimony. Those who just got admission in the school of ministry, congratulations. But you will notice that a supplementary list came out. It's not in our culture to release a supplementary list. Are we together now? Someone spoke for the students. A voice that I honor that we all know. I supervised the supplementary list by myself. There were three people that I honor with every esteem in my life. And when three of them called me, I said, no, no, no. I'm under authority to bring all the forms of the students who did not get the admission. You, you were just sitting in your house and you saw an alert. And they said, congratulations. But someone spoke for you. Why has it stopped? Why should it not continue in other areas of your life? That somebody will speak for you. You are just sitting, you see an alert with a phone number and you call and say, who are you? You say, we were discussing and someone mentioned your name. It has happened to me. It happens all the time. Pray one minute and say, Lord, help us. Financial help us. Please ignore people who think you are wasting your time. Pray this prayer with faith. Lord, come help us. The house of God needs help us. My family needs the ministry of help us. All I need at this point in my life is a genuine helper. No string attached. No thank you for investment. The what I need now is not an investment. I need a helper. My family is about breaking up. I need a helper. Please don't joke. This is your destiny. This is a kingdom secret that can work your tears. I can't be a helper. The gift of men. He gave gifts unto men. He gave gifts unto men to the end that they be established. He gave gifts to men.
men to go and go to hell. In the time of recession, we still giving gifts to men. In the time of lack and want, Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Jesus, this is someone's birthday tonight. I believe. I believe, I believe. Who said the money is my birthday salary? Who said the money is my life? And wipe it. Who said the roof of the house must be paid by your savings? Hallelujah. Please sit down. I tell you, my spirit is stirred with what I'm telling you. Many of you will thank me. You will see your lives change overnight. Don't mind people who think what I'm sharing with you is not making sense. I show you what can change your life. Brothers and sisters, it's one of the biggest secrets of this work you see by the grace of God. There are few things in this ministry, let me tell you, there are few things in this ministry, few things in this ministry that are actively being paid for from the central house. Every week, every time, there is somebody rising to handle something. When we used to use other venues, there are people who just arise and say, look, I will pay for the venue. I will pay for this. How much does it cost to transport people all through after service? I will pay for it. Don't think it's everybody who must say, what will I get in return? There are people, whatever you want to give them, God has given them already. They don't need anything. They just want to bless you. What is man that thou art mindful of? Number four. What is the implication of the presence of men in your life? I call it impartation, access to impartation and the prophetic. Access to impartation and the prophetic. Why do you need men in your life? Their presence can guarantee you access to impartation. What is impartation? Transference of grace for possibilities. Transference of grace for possibilities. Men move according to the kinds and the dimensions of graces at work in them. No matter how you cry for God to anoint you, if you ignore men, you will never. Do you know, look at me, some of you, all you need in your life it's just that prophetic push. Prophetic push. Bishop Oyedeko said every time they are busy celebrating winners and say, wow, this is how the ministry has risen. They will just go to Papa Ia Deboe and they will just lay hands on him and say, you have seen well, but a new level. And that's the end of it. Prophetic push is capital. It can bless your life. It can wipe your tears. One prophetic word. I've shared with you countless testimonies here to the glory of God. Maybe I'll just review one or two. Remember the story I told you about the two women? I went to buy sugar cane. And two mama, old women, old women. I'm not sure they could even speak English. And they were trying to remove, they were trying to, um, um, what do you call it? Yes, to remove the wrapper so that they remove the small money to pay for sugar cane. And I said, I, I, I may not have much, but come on, these are my mothers. Let me bless them. And I just bought the sugar cane. I don't think I spent up to 100 naira. I can't remember how much exactly. And those women were so touched. They were blessing me and blessing me. And one of them said, my son forever walk upon gold. 
happened a woman who is trying to remove five naira. She knew what she carried on her head. Listen, don't wait for people's physical result to believe they have it. You will be joking. You may see a man with ten members, but he must have he can have a kingmaker anointing. He can anoint you and you have a stadium full of membership. If all you are looking for is someone else's resolve, no. Some results are not meant to appear physically. They are meant to be transferred and reflected in the life of another. It's called a kingmaker anointing. They never become kings themselves, yet they are the ones who anoint and throne and dethrone kings. Those of you who have kings in your village, you know there are people who sit down with the kings. They are called kingmakers. They never become kings themselves, yet they are the ones who consecrate kings. Saul never became a king himself. But he was the one who made kings. And he was the one through God who rejected kings. Let me tell you. There are people who carry graces. They may not physically look like it. They may not be millionaires. But they never lack. Quarter to shame. God will always arise. That's a grace you need. Because all you need in life is not just money. Bishop Oedeko calls it the grace of on time. When things come too late, they can kill you. They should come on time. How he got that anointing, he said he was a particular man of God. I don't know if it was Archbishop Benson Idahosa or whoever it was who, you know, sent him on errand, sent to Edeko on errand then when he was just starting and to show up at a particular time. And the person showed up fast. And, and Oedeko showed up fast. And then the man looked at him and said, Ah, you mean you came at the time? He said, from today, I impart upon you the grace of on time. Before a need arises, the supply comes. There is such a grace. Now, you may see people move. They are not millionaires. But they, they carry that possibility. The moment shame is about to come, something must happen to change that result. It's a grace. Impartation. By God's grace, we have lavishly received impartations in this place. Impartations. I have received impartations. I'm like a bee. I'm a product of strange graces. Jesus himself being the chiefest of them all. But there are human vessels. There are men who have entered my life and just wiped my tears in certain areas. Impartation. And then a prophetic push. I told you prophecy is both revelatory and creative. The more superior dimension of prophecy is the creative dimension. Revelatory dimension gives you faith and direction. But when you get to the end of your road, you need the creative dimension of prophecy. Where someone can look at your life and say, look, physically speaking, there is no hope. But in the name of Jesus, I introduce a reality, an equation into your life. I was teaching in, in, in Akure and I told them the anointing is, the, is an advantage. It's an advantage. It's an advantage. It's an advantage. Prophecy. This ministry you see, there are constant prophecies being bombarded on our heads. Prophecy. 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 Where is the prophetic voice pushing you to the next level? Where is the prophetic voice? That's why every time I minister here, I pray and I speak over your life from the depth of my heart. It's not just copy men of God. I understand the power of the prophetic. Second Chronicles 20.20 It says, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall he be established. Then it says, Believe his prophets so shall you prosper. In other words, don't believe them. And what happens to you? He says, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, were they preserved. The prophetic is real. Not just calling names and numbers, but the ability to speak realities into being. Taking an advantage of this mystery. The capacity to create things. Because everything that appears comes from the unseen realm. So a man can program your destiny through prophecy like an alarm clock. You can program an alarm clock to ring at a time. 
you see that you program an alarm clock 327 and the clock will be quiet as if he's dead 327 on the dot that's how a man's destiny can be programmed a man can shift a breakthrough that should happen when you are 49 to happen when you are 25 prophecy prophecy can shift possibilities to and fro you must understand this by this time tomorrow elisha said he didn't say god told me by this time tomorrow when he met the shunammite woman he said what should i do to you should i talk to the king he said no no i live among my own people what should i he said well we don't have a child hear what he said he placed a time that one of the ministry of the prophetic is to place a time for your miracle because the clock must read he said to appoint unto them that morning zion to appoint so something that would have happened next year they take it and make it happen next week it's a superior dimension of the prophetic a woman will be coming here i'm sure one of these days to share her testimony she sent a testimony that touched me now this is not the first time we're getting these testimonies but they are very powerful i don't have time to look for it in my phone but i will tell you she said i think we we're in a program i don't know which of the meetings now whether in yola or whatever yes they were part of those who uh, were in the welfare cooking cooking for us and i always pray for all those who cook those who drive me and cook for me every time i go for any meeting now i pray for the woman and according to her she said i told her that what do you want and she said she wanted twins and she said it jokingly and i said in the name of jesus may the lord give you twins nothing really happened she got pregnant two weeks after that time that's the first news this is a woman that had been buried and but when they checked her there was only one child glory be to god that's all right at least i'm happy that i'm pregnant now and she said just like um i think maybe a month ago they went back to check and they were twins twins right there you see that she sent me a text actually because she started having some little pain like birth pains and they were saying most likely they will use cs so she shared that testimony and she was trying to encourage me to pray for her so she can give birth you know safely and then come and testify the creative dimension of prophecy that can place realities children just come through a man they come from god the moment mary said be it unto me she was pregnant it's just the body of the child and the genetics that come through the man children are a heritage from the lord he said when he led captivity captive he gave gifts to men the question i want to ask you tonight before we pray is have you received your own because the bible says that he gave those gifts to the end that we attain a level you have not attained that level meaning you have not received those gifts have you received the strategies the ideas the wisdom have you received the endorsements accreditations have you received financial and material resources? I'm speaking to somebody from the depth of my heart. There are testimonies I can begin to share with you now. But if I say some of these testimonies, that they are not, it's not even safe for some of us because it may just push you through seasons you are not ready for. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. Anybody that tells you that God cannot fast track the life of a man is a joking. Look at my life. Look at my life. I've heard of testimonies of people. In this recession, people have arisen and done things you cannot imagine. One of the gifts that God has given me in my life, I draw me to the leaders and the workers all the time, is the gift of men. The gift of men is greater than money. The gift of men is greater than money. There are some things money cannot do. Are we together? Listen. If you labor unto death, I've given this example here. You labor unto death and you get five naira. And somebody walks up and gives me five naira. Are, are five naira the same? No. Your sweat and your life was drained for that five naira. It's, it's called the mystery of hardship. When you work for everything, you know we encourage diligence here. But your lifetime is not enough for you to get every result by working. 
you need an advantage. And that advantage is shrouded in men. Not oil. Not real estate. Not banking. Men. 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 Who have you ignored in your life? Whose voice must speak for you in this season? It's not that there are no jobs. There are people getting jobs every time. Just like someone is about to get one now. But who is speaking for you? Oh, there are no contracts. Please keep quiet. Don't say there are no contracts. With 7.2 billion people on earth? Are you joking? There are no contracts? There is no contract for you. But there's contract. But a voice can make it for you. Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. You will do a miracle. A miracle today. Listen. When you get into trouble, hear me. Who speaks for you? There are some of us, it's not all about money. When you get into trouble, who speaks for you? There are some of us, if things don't work out in our lives, we are dead. There's nobody to arise and speak for you. The Bible says, valiant men came to David. They entered a covenant that they must make him king. Who is ready to die to see that your cause? You criticize a man of God and there's nobody to back him. No, sir. There should be somebody. No, 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 no. Don't say this against Pastor Femi. I love him. Are we together? They just said they ask some money in your office. You are about to be thrown out. You are in trouble. And you are innocent. Just because you are working in the accounts department. They are about to jail you. In the prison. In the, in the police station. There is nobody to speak for you. Before the law court. Nobody to speak for you. They are about to throw you in. Nobody to speak for you. Hapa. That's a life with no favor. That every time trouble arises, somebody will come and say, Look, ordinarily speaking, you are supposed to do A and B and C to a Emeka, but I come here. Have you seen people who, when they are fighting, they come and stand and say, Don't beat this person. It's better to beat me. Who can cover you like that? Politicians call them God, Father, God, whatever. Brothers and sisters, we have ignored this to our detriment. One of the blessings God has given me in my life is not just divine immunity and protection. God has raised men, I can tell you this, men who will stand and they will mind blood coming out of their bodies to make sure they protect my interests and what they represent. And I do not take them for granted, but I am grateful. I have been shocked. A man of God somewhere once said something that was not too nice about me. And I mean, that person, I, I didn't even know. It was when he apologized. More than 100 people called him, blasted nonsense out of his life. I said, God will punish you and punish you and join and punish you. You mix every, the baby and the bad water and think everybody. It was something that was trying to show maybe like all these men, those, you, you know, you know what I mean now. Maybe somebody put his hand in something that is ungodly. Time shall tell. You know those kind of sarcastic statements. And my goodness. And I'm not talking of young people. Married women. The person will say his testimony and blast the man and say, Are you stupid? The man sent me a text. He thought I knew about it, honestly speaking. It was when I got it. I said, No, 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 no. No offense. I don't have. Why? why, why I mean, I don't keep any offense. What for? Can you have people like that? There are men who can arise to cover your shame. Just because they know you, they will arise and say, no, 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 no. I will cover your shame for you. We have some prayers to pray this night. If our parents had this, they would not be struggling like this. Because every other person who has risen has exactly what they have. Educationally, whatever it is. No help. No help. You work hard, you go to school, almost as if you would die, you graduate, and your, your certificate becomes like a toilet issue. Nobody to speak on it. The only thing there is the registrar signature. And life will look at you and say, No, I need another signature. Come on, this is this is this is too regular. 
show me another one you are praying and fasting but you need to start praying strategically don't just pray and say lord send angels yes angels are important but you need a physical entity moved by those angels there was a particular time they were going to this paul was afraid of entering a city and god said no no don't be afraid i have many people there nobody will touch you i have many people many men there i'm tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than Tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more than me. 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 Listen, one of these four things will become your prayer point. I'm going to give us 10 minutes and I will not interrupt you. 10 minutes alone with God. You know what aspect. The Bible says he gave gifts up to men. Ask God, Lord, where is my own? Where is my own gift? Where is the man you have sent with the financial blessing? Where is the man you have sent, oh God, with the prophecy for my next level? Where is the man you have sent with the idea? Where is the man to embrace my life, my ministry? Ten minutes. Please, I don't know how you will pray. But the next ten minutes, instrumentalists help us. Try to say the God of heaven. And so I want to receive my own gift. You are giving gifts to me.
Praise the Lord. Listen, listen. The Lord gave me a promise that when I teach this message, He will release radical breakthroughs to the lives of men. Believe this. You will hear of people's lives changing overnight. Overnight. If you have never believed a man of God in your life, can't you just believe for once? Doesn't your spirit bear witness that this is the key to what brought you here? Men, an advocate. Men. Listen, listen. He said they are taken for a prey, but none say yet restore. They capture you, but there is no man to shout restore. Prayer point number one. Oh God, whoever holds the strategy, the wisdom, the idea that I need to experience triumph, I open the gates of my spirit and I receive them as gifts. Go ahead and pray. The gift, the gift of wisdom, the gift of understanding, the gift of strategies, business strategies through men, ministry strategies through men. One man can change your company. One man can change your business. One man can link you up with what ten years has not been able to give you. One man can open up the gates of ministry. Send that man, oh God. Send that woman, oh God. Send that man, oh God. Send that woman, oh God. I open the gates of my spirit. 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 I receive them as gifts. Hallelujah. One man. One man. The difference between you and the next level. Prayer point number two. Listen. Father, I have the talent. I am ready for the next level. But there is no ladder to climb. The voice that must endorse me for the next level. I call you by prophecy. Lift your voice and pray. The voice endorsing my papers. The voice endorsing my products. The voice endorsing my services. The voice endorsing the hand of God on my life. I call you in the name of Jesus. Prophesy, prophesy. Prophesy. It's time to rise. Somebody somewhere has what it takes to speak for you. Somebody somewhere has what it takes to speak for you. Call them. Call them Koinonia. Call them. Call them for your family. Call them for your life. The man to endorse your marriage. The man to endorse access to the man of God who carries the grace you need. The man to endorse your business. The man to endorse your employment. Master holder, I'm ready for the job. I need an endorser. I'm a 
PhD holder, I'm a graduate, I need an endorser, Lord I'm a businessman, I have paid my price, I have done my homework, I need a voice, a voice to speak at the gate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you something. If you are a parent here, yeah, everything you pay, you pray for yourself. Pray for your children. Whether they are in your womb or they are everywhere. I hear what I'm saying. If you are a lady here, yeah, as you pray, you lay your hands on your womb. You don't wait till you get married. Come on. John was filled with the Holy Ghost in his water's womb. You can speak favor to be waiting for that, 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 that child. Formed in favor. Prayer point number three. You are going to cry. Now listen, listen, listen. I told you there is the sovereign dimension of God's will. You are going to cry for help. Help. Don't cry for money. Lord, a helper can come. I call him to my life. Lift your voice and pray. Mazataka parataka toka te. A helper. A helper. Are you praying? A helper. A helper. A helper. It can't be this difficult. It can't be this difficult. It can't be this difficult. Bring a helper to make my life easy, O God, so that I can have the time to serve you, so that I can have the concentration to focus on my assignment. Lord, I'm tired of financial destruction. Lord, I'm tired of material destruction. Send a helper to clear the way that I can serve you. Send a helper. Are you praying? I don't pray, don't look around, pray. Shaka taka ta, make a pro 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 Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Kai, I tell you, I'm, 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 I, I feel the joy in my spirit for the prayers who are praying. I know this prayer is doing something in the realm of the spirit. The last prayer point. I want you to pray this with all your heart. You are going to cry and say, Lord, the prophetic push. That one you can have it this night, right now. That one is available for you. It's up for you to receive. You are going to pray and say, Lord, the prophetic push, that push I need, that impartation, that prophetic push for my ministry, for my life, for my family. Lord, my family is in hellfire. We must come out this night. Lift your voice and pray. Pray outside, pray. Online, pray wherever you are connected from any nation of the world. Pray, pray.
Hallelujah. Listen. Never forget this kingdom key. It's a mystery that has been responsible for the, the mysterious rising of stars. No father, no mother, notwithstanding they rose. No education, no experience, notwithstanding they rose. Come on now. Life delayed and battered. The enemy ate a major part of their life, but in one year they recovered. Two men. Two men. Never forget this. He gave gifts to men. He gave gifts to men. Man of God, I'm 45 years. I've wasted my life. Don't worry. One man. One man can step into your life and answer the question of 10 years. Man of God, my business is grounded. Listen. Listen. Do you know, while the Lord asked me to prepare for this message, I was watching Channels TV and I saw how that Eric L was about to pack up because they were in debt. It was so much. And imagine a big, one of the biggest airlines in the country. I love them, of course. I know that there are people who work there who might be listening right now. And for me, I felt so sad because I know how our administration depends on that airline alone. There are places only them can go. And I started thinking, I said, my God, that means there has to be another plan. And the only other plan can be chartered services. And all of a sudden, I just had that Amcon representing the federal government said they are too they are too important to let them crash. And they said we are coming to wage you. I said this is my message. This is my message. The federal government. How many airlines? I don't want to mention names. Have crashed in our presence. Federal government waved them and said you, you are in debt. But that a man is almost falling, and then a hand picks him. You are too valuable to fall, so I help you. Listen, so you are making a mistake and you are about to die. You don't even know what kingdom key. Then God wakes somebody to start interceding for you because you are too valuable. Before you catch the revelation, someone else is already praying for you. Lift your hands, I want to pray. Honestly, God sees my heart and God knows that I'm praying this prayer from the depth of my heart. Don't worry, whether you are standing or not, just a sign of faith. I want to pray for you. The Lord has declared that it's this year of triumph. Let's not make him look like a liar. You've heard the testimonies of people. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, the sovereign Lord, the one who orchestrated this message, I pray for you. Prophecy number one is that in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, beginning from this night, a man, everybody, one by one, a man must show up in your destiny. A man must show up in your destiny. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Paul said, once and again I desire to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Satan hinders men. There are some of you, God answered your prayer since last year. But there is a spirit somewhere sitting on your breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm prophesying. I'm just speaking in tongues. In the name of Jesus, every force sitting on your gate to make it not open for your helpers, I cast those forces out of your life. I cast those forces out of your life. I cast those forces out of your life. Listen, whether it's an activity of witchcraft, an activity of causes, projections of men in their anger, the scourging tongues of men, 
to cause the constellations to fight you in the name of Jesus Christ who died and rose again I command your gates open I command your gates open I break the power of divination I break yokes and curses I break the power of divination When Jesus got to the grave of Lazarus, others were crying, but they did not know even in the grave if a man comes, resurrection can happen. The grave was there, waiting for a man. When Jesus came, he said, ah, uh -uh, hold on, Lazarus, only the voice of a man could call another man, not the voice of an animal, the voice of a man. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. Comfort. Comfort. I want to call some things. I want to call some things back. They left you, but they are not missing. They are still on earth. They left you, but hear me, they are not missing. In the name of Jesus Christ, Kabato Koto Paratia, Embe Toko To Pereke To Shapariata, Rata Parata Reko Sebariata. I prophesy, whatever has left your life, whatever has left your hand, money that you lost, business that you lost, relationships, opportunities, I prophesy, restoration now, restoration now, restoration now, listen, listen, I don't care what happened. I, I don't want to know the story behind it. In the name of Jesus Christ, even if it's a body part that disappeared, I call a new one now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever is the works of your hands, that for some reason you do your best but it's like it cannot break through some levels there are people here who are business people there are people here who are working and they've been in the same position forever there are people who don't just move forward in the name of jesus whatever has tied your feet so that there is no speed in your life i command supernatural speed right now supernatural speed right now Supernatural speed right now. Hallelujah. Wasi pray. Listen. There are men being influenced by demons to stop the moment the God, the Spirit of God, is moving the will of a man to your favor. They show up just like a man shows up. They show up and they impart fear. There are people who would have done your business. But just when they wanted to put money, somebody said, be careful, oh, and they went away. There are people who would have bought your product in box, but someone showed up and said, do you really need it? In the name of Jesus, whoever is stopping men from blessing you, whoever is being used by demon spirits to stop men from blessing you, I silence their voices right now. I silence their voices right now. Every council of Ahitophel speaking in dark places against the people of God, I reverse their pronouncements right now. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. And Jesus grew in stature, in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God. You can have favor with God and not have favor with men. I want to speak favor. We must attack hardship and... Do you know, listen, listen. By now you know. But do you know why we do these things? Because we want to concentrate on doing the work of the kingdom. These things are distractions. Thinking about money is a distraction. Thinking about all these, all these jargons. You can't pray. You spend three hours, you are not praying for souls. You are praying out of against trouble. It's a distraction. 
You can't have the peace to plan your family well because you sit down and there's tension everywhere. Why? Because of all kinds of issues. In the name of Jesus, I pray. May a fresh mantle of favor, a mantle of favor, a real solid mantle of favor, may it land upon your life right now. Favor with men. Favor with men. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Favor with men. I place it upon your life. Favor with men. Favor with strangers. Favor with men. Favor with strangers. Favor with diplomats. Favor with men of God. Favor with politicians. Favor with business people. In the name of Jesus. Listen. Every time a man is looking for someone to bless, may you show up there suddenly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anytime they are discussing someone to lift, may the angel of the Lord introduce your name. Hallelujah. The angel saluted Mary and said, Hail Mary, thou art favored among all women. And she wondered, what manner of salutation is this? These are the forces that produce certain strange levels of breakthrough. Tomorrow you will turn and see that things are working for you. And people say, how did you do it? You are no more qualified than me. Your father is nobody in the society. And you tell them, I understood that there is something called the gift of men. The gift of men. The gift of men. The gift of men in your life and it will change your life lord jesus we thank you for tonight lord i have declared your word to your people in the name of jesus let there be a strange performance we release angels to compel the men that we have called by prophecy because some of them have stubborn wheels, but we compel them by the ministry of angels. And we decree and declare that they must show up for every life, business, destiny, and ministry. In the name of Jesus. May your life from tonight receive a quantum leap. May you have a testimony that will end worry from your life forever. And let me just use one minute and extend this prayer to our worrying families. Because some of our family members, they are almost depressed to death. The yoke on their head is too much. It's as if they are carrying the whole world. There are bills here. There is trouble here. There is court case here. There is police case here. There is nobody to help them. Lord Jesus, we pray. Anyone standing here, may you represent your family right now as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Using you as a prophetic point of contact, I pray for your loved ones. The same thing God is doing here, may He reproduce it to them. Every impossible situation in any family right now that looks like it defies solution this night, may a helper qualified to help arise and help. If it's a financial problem, may a helper arise to help. If it's a marital and family problem, may a stranger arise and help. In the name of Jesus Christ. If it's a spiritual problem, may a man with an anointing appear and help. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.